Welcome back to Why in the Morning special. Thanks to Hilda with Ethi and Joy Mushashi. And I'd like to echo what they said. If you happen to interact with any videos that you think might break the views, uh, send them to us on our on our social media handles at White54 channel on Twitter, White54 underscore channel on Instagram, and White54 on Facebook. Hashtag is Why in the Morning. And never ever forget to tell us where you're watching us from so we can give you guys a shout out. So uh, sex is a very sensitive topic when it comes to the African setting. And it's treated with a lot of shame. And uh, we have uh, teenage is learning about sex in the most uh, wrong platforms uh, 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 instead of learning it from their parents. This is why we brought um, a counselor with USAID who goes by the name Esther Karuki uh, to demystify this for us for strength of a woman. Karibu sana. Uh, thank you very mm -hmm. much. Uh, as you said, my name is Esther Karuki. Mm -hmm. I'm my young counselor working with USAID. Uh, very passionate about the career in Kenya, HIV free soon. Uh, by educating the young generation on matters of sex mm -hmm. and uh, sex like the real it mm -hmm. and letting them know what they didn't know. Mm -hmm. The information that I've gotten from social medias, mm -hmm. internets, mm -hmm. which is misleading them. Mm -hmm. That is what I'm here to clarify about. This is what you're here to clarify about. But yes. before we talk about the topic, uh, uh, I'd like to go back, date back a little bit. Uh, at what point uh, did you figure you want to work with kids and you want to make the society better by just educating them? Um, it was at a point when I realized that mm -hmm. youth really need it. Mm -hmm. uh, with my job, day-to-day -day job, I encountered with so many people, so many people mm -hmm. who are suffering due to lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. some of them due to being misled, some of them because of myths and beliefs that we, be that we had then. And then again, and most of them who are suffering, they are ladies. Because mm -hmm. you can see in the African way of setting, the way it was set, mm -hmm. it was seen as if it's the role of a man mm -hmm. to protect the lady against the sex. Mm -hmm. But in real sense, who needs to be protected? Is it a man or a lady? Mm -hmm. For you, what you just protect yourself against, is, it's HIV. Mm -hmm. What if you learn that you already have a HIV? Is there a need to use a condom? Mm -hmm. So I empower girl child that it's not when a man mm -hmm. proposed that you should use a condom. Mm -hmm. You should also, you as a lady, mm -hmm. know it is your role to protect yourself. It is your role to protect yourself yes, as a lady. As a lady. These are lady. issues that you saw uh, yeah. in the society in the and society. you said I want to address these issues. Exactly. Right. Uh, dating back a little bit again, uh, what is your background in, in education? Uh, I'm a social worker uh -huh. and a psychology counselor uh -huh. and I have also done sex education. Uh -huh. Yes. All right, so you studied uh, social sociology? Yeah. First. Yeah. And then you went ahead to specialize in, in sex, psychology. Exactly. And then sex education. Sex education. All right. Yes. And currently you're working with the USAID. Yes. All right. Uh, so uh, these things, most of these things are uh, are done by non by non profit organizations. Yeah. Yeah. when it comes to social work in Kenya and uh, things like sex education and HIV prevention, most of them are done by non-profit organizations. Sure. Is it the role of the government also to play, to, to do some of this stuff? It's actually the role of the government. Mm -hmm. The non-organized, the non-organized governmental organization should come in like a help, mm -hmm. but it is the role of the government. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is the role of the government. Yeah. These people it just is a hundred percent the role of the government. Mm -hmm. So these yes. people just come in to support, yeah, to give support. Right. So uh, uh, one group or one demographic that you work with, um, sexual uh, people who have been violated sexually these victims all right so we don't uh, call them victim they are uh, clients the clients <laughs> if you victim, i'm sorry to say all right like I'm sorry to say. Yeah. Uh, so corrections yeah. uh your clients uh what age to what age do they lie mostly uh, the topic today, let's talk about teenagers mm -hmm. and youth. Mm -hmm. Because as per the last year's mm -hmm. HIV statistics, it turned out that 46% mm -hmm. of youth mm -hmm. and teenagers, that is from 13 years to mm -hmm. 15 years, 46% of us are HIV positive mm -hmm. as per the last year's HIV 46%. statistics. 46%. Percent. You see, that's quite a big number. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's so a wanting number. 46% of uh, youth, youth between and 13. teenager. 13 to 35. 13 to 35. Yes. 46 percent of 46 percent between 13 to, to 35, 35 mm -hmm. are HIV positive. Yes. So for every two, at least uh, one. Mm -hmm. All right. How factual is this? Because we are like uh, 12 people in studio right now, mm -hmm. and uh, they'll all tell me they have been tested, mm -hmm. and they'll all tell me uh, I'm good now. 
<laughs> so people lie about these things their I status still i don't i would not like to say people lie because issue of hiv status to keep to keep it open mm -hmm. it's your choice it's your choice i might decide to say i'm positive mm -hmm. i might decide to say i'm negative mm -hmm. according to what i feel i should people should know about me mm -hmm. yes all right so it is something that you can keep private you're exactly. allowed to keep it you private. are allowed actually oh. saying your your status is bridging off confidentiality i shouldn't it's it's bridging of confidentiality exactly. what if you uh, you're getting into a relationship with someone no when we are getting into a relationship with someone mm -hmm. i always advise people together mm -hmm. go for a test go together. for a test when you're getting into a relationship. exactly go for a test together together yes at least we have that okay. uh, so be sure to bring in your comments your view your comments and suggestions and your questions on white54 channel white54 underscore channel on instagram and white54 on facebook hashtag is why in the morning don't forget to tell us where you're watching us from all right so uh you're so passionate about the culture mm -hmm. i was made to understand yeah. all right and you explained why at least you're passionate about the culture mm -hmm. all right and uh I, I think you're working with the boy child as well yes well, yeah all right mm -hmm. so what are some of the issues that are affecting the boy uh s affecting the boy mm -hmm. uh, issues affecting the boy yes in around relation this to HIV yes this positive. demographic that we're talking about mm -hmm. 13 to 35 to 13. Yeah. one and the main thing mm -hmm. is lack of knowledge mm -hmm. about sex. Mm -hmm. Like, if I were to ask you, at mm -hmm. what point in sex mm -hmm. does one acquire the HIV virus? Mm -hmm. Most of us believe that it's the final sexual phase, mm -hmm. which we call ejaculation. Mm -hmm. We are meant to believe that unless a man ejaculates and that fluid is in me, mm -hmm. that is the only time I can acquire HIV and AIDS. So most of them would would start having sex and protected sex until when this guy is feeling like I'm almost ejaculating and that is when they decided to use a condom. So the whole phase, the whole four phases, we have five phases in sex. So the whole four phases they would go for unprotected sex until what we call the ejaculation or the excitement phase that is the final sex phase that is when they will decide to use a condom. Yes. So what about the phases you have used, you have gone for unprotected like sex? Exposed. You are still at So lack of knowledge is lack one thing. Of knowledge. And this affects both sexes. Exactly. So this is something that you're trying to spread out there. Yeah. Knowledge is one thing that you're spreading yes. out there. Sure. Right. Uh, so as you spread this knowledge, mm -hmm. is it in school as well? Is it being taught in school as it now? Uh, not really. Not really. The so only thing they know is that HIV... I was looking at their syllabuses actually, mm -hmm. and the only thing that is indicated is sex. Right. It's transformed through blood transfusion, mm -hmm. he, he, um, sex. Mm -hmm. You see, briefed, briefed about it. Right. But they're not given the required knowledge. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So uh, since it's not enough in school, mm -hmm. uh, since not all of us can access a counselor like you that works with USAID, mm -hmm. so we are stuck with our parents, yeah? Mm -hmm. All right. Do you think parents are doing enough to teach their kids about these things? The first question is, uh, is that parent also informed? Mm -hmm. Most of them are not. Mm -hmm. Most of them are actually, they also, they actually need the kid to educate them because most of our parents, let's say in back days, they were not, they were not lucky to have learned more of HIV. Mm -hmm. And then again, you see there is more that is coming with HIV, more discovery, like now we have the pills mm -hmm. that can prevent you prior and before. Mm -hmm. have, if you have unprotected sex and you feel, yes, I should control myself, you'd go for PEP. PEP is what we call the post exposure prophylaxis mm -hmm. this is a drug that you take before 72 hours mm -hmm. when you have already had hiv uh, you have you have had unprotected sex yes. and we have, yeah and we have the prep this is the pre exposure prophylaxis this is a drug that you can take prior mm -hmm. to having unprotected sex so do you see like our parents might not be having this knowledge they, sh they yeah so our parents might not be having this the, knowledge. Yeah, exactly. All right, so since it's the role of the parent to teach the kids, mm. uh, so uh, what are some of the things you're doing around uh, educating the parents to instill the knowledge to their kids? Because you're not going to access each and every kid around this country. Okay, my first role mm -hmm. is to stop blame games because mm -hmm. we have brought our counseling to, to, to be like, who is to blame? Mm -hmm. It has already happened. Mm -hmm. We had around 
2,000 kids who dropped out of school, they didn't sit for their KCPE exams due to early pregnancies. Mm -hmm. And all now we sit on tables mm -hmm. in media houses and they will, is it parent who is not doing his work? Mm -hmm. Is it teachers who are not doing, it mm -hmm. has so become that is, like that a blame game. First. It needs to stop first. Mm -hmm. Because if at 13 you know what is sex, mm -hmm. you know all about sex. So mm -hmm. I like dealing with you in person mm -hmm. because after all, if you can have sex and you know what is sex, we're engaging in sex, actually most of them know even much than you'd think. Mm -hmm. So the issue of abstinence and mm -hmm. blame game mm -hmm. should come out. And it's the high time we tell them the truth mm -hmm. so that the, you should know the life is in your hands. Mm -hmm. Yeah, let's not blame teachers in school. Most mm -hmm. of them don't even have enough time. Mm -hmm. They have syllabuses to cover mm -hmm. in the end of the year. Mm -hmm. So again, you want to put this burden. They're not going to play parent and play teacher. Yeah, mm -hmm. and then the, the kids are too many in school. Like mm -hmm. I can't pick one by one. Most mm -hmm. of them are suffering from different problems. Mm -hmm. The teacher is there to cover the syllabus. Well, mm -hmm. most of them would just get in and help. But mm -hmm. how much can they help? Mm -hmm. Their role is to cover the syllabus. Mm -hmm. Even if they would help, they would help at least 20%. Mm -hmm. So the other 80% is it's upon you. It's upon you. You as, as a teenager. A Right. You as a person, you as a teenager. Mm -hmm. Yes. All right. So uh, moving on swiftly, uh, talking about the the statistics mm -hmm. of uh, people who are infected or affected by HIV, mm -hmm. you're talking about 46 percent. Uh, while other people will say a very huge population has not been tested. Mm -hmm. So where, how do how do you get the statistics? Because so many people have not been tested. And they'll tell you, mm -hmm. I, I was tested five years ago. I was tested when I went to hospital uh, for, my, for, for checkup. Mm -hmm. uh, but I had malaria. Uh, so, but they had to do each and every test. And that was five years ago. So many people will tell you they have not been tested. But the statistics say 46%. Mm -hmm. So how are we supposed to trust this stat? You know, nowadays in any public hospital, mm -hmm. even if you went there with a headache, it has it's actually have become involuntary like they used to say mm -hmm. because like last week i was there mm -hmm. uh, i had a, i had a, a stomach ache somehow mm -hmm. or sort of but the first thing i did i was tested for hiv mm -hmm. so it's no longer voluntary but for you to access mm -hmm. the medical you have to get tested fast. Mm -hmm. So this is how the statistics is taken. Because you can't tell me in the span of five years you did at least attend the hospital once. Right. But yeah, you are tested. But you've but, given your but results the as a person. choice to tell you if I am tested or I'm not, I told you it's very confidentiality. Mm -hmm. It's very confidential. It's very confidential. Yes. Uh, talking about confidentiality, mm -hmm. uh, so confidentiality is something that you practice as a psychologist. Exactly. What you talk to your client about uh, should not leave that. Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. So... I get tempted sometimes to share with uh, somebody maybe after work and just say, hey, today I met some somebody and this and this person has this problem and I don't know how I'm going to help. Them. I've never seen something like this. Uh, you see, with me, mm -hmm. if um, uh, I, I'm with a client which I can't handle, mm -hmm. I refer them to a higher, to a higher counselor mm -hmm. who is higher than me. But I don't have the right to share. Yeah, you don't have the right I to share. I don't have the right to share. I have never felt. I have never found myself tempted either. All right, you've never <laughs> no. found yourself tempted no, either. I have never. All right, so uh, I was talking to somebody else who told me uh, sometimes uh, uh, when it comes to issues like this one, because mm -hmm. uh, when you're suffering from something like HIV, it affects your mental so state as uh, mm -hmm. it affects your mental state as well, and uh, sometimes when you visit the wrong doctor, mm -hmm. it gets worse. Mm -hmm. Somebody told me this, mm -hmm. and it happened to them. What can you say about this? What is your definition of a wrong doctor? Maybe first I get that. Uh, when I say a wrong doctor, mm -hmm. maybe it's, uh, you know, people, two people cannot always blend. Mm -hmm. Yes, it's mm -hmm. human nature. Yeah, Sometimes yeah. you're going to meet some people that you're going to blend with. Sometimes you're going to meet people that your bloods don't mix. Mm -hmm. So sometimes you meet somebody and you feel instantly this person is judgmental. The type of questions they're asking, the type of way they're addressing things. Sometimes you're just not compatible with the person. But you see, big, being judgmental is one of the non skill in counseling. Mm -hmm. You shouldn't be judgmental. That is the first class. Yeah, actually, uh -huh. even the question why uh -huh. it shouldn't come in in a counseling room mm -hmm. because when I ask you why, I'm being judgmental. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It shouldn't. Not it shouldn't. unless we call them unprofessional mm -hmm. counselors, maybe. Mm -hmm. So chances because are... Because the chances mm -hmm. of you being judgmental, maybe mm -hmm. you are unprofessional. Mm -hmm. All right. So chances are this person might be unprofessional. Unprofessional. All right. Yes. 
wow get deep be sure to interact with us <laughs> on white five four channel on twitter white five four underscore channel on instagram and white five four on facebook hashtag is why in the morning hashtag is queens wednesday hashtag is strength of a woman keep your questions your views and your comments coming our way oh uh, you can address them to me directly at it's by more all right so uh currently uh you're working with kids also you you told me you're working with kids who have been who have suffered who uh you said clients mm -hmm. uh -huh. all right so clients who have suffered uh from uh sexual violence mm -hmm. all right so uh people assume that it's only girls who go through this no. all right so maybe you can share with them it's not actually only girl child mm -hmm. though the girl child is more prone to it mm -hmm. but also boy child nowadays are also mm -hmm. suffering from uh, sodomization mm -hmm. uh, which is even more dangerous mm -hmm. than uh, than even the normal sexual for a young girl mm -hmm. but uh, most of them is what i was talking about myths and belief mm -hmm. do you know most of people believe that anal sex does not transfer hiv mm -hmm. do they believe so Mm -hmm. which is a huge misconception a huge, exactly mm -hmm. because uh anal sex and actually this is a full sex mm -hmm. uh you see with the with the anus the muscles the anal muscles mm -hmm. are only meant to bring out mm -hmm. but not to take inside mm -hmm. so when you are trying to molest these kids so you are trying to force muscles the reverse uh -huh. all the to opposite reverse so to reverse the, muscle. the wrong uh -huh. muscles and now this is even when you are at very very high risk of acquiring hiv uh -huh. because there is a lot of bleeding uh -huh. included in it uh -huh. yes and uh, hiv is not transferred through body fluids like uh -huh. the semen all the ejaculation duct uh -huh. the sperm itself but also blood uh -huh. yes all right so this is very dangerous and very this is dangerous. happening in Kenya it's right now. In Kenya. Kids it's are getting so much. Exactly. All right, uh, which leads to my next question. So as a parent, mm -hmm. you uh, you release your kid to go to school maybe at 6 a.m. in the morning. They walk in the rains, they go to school, they play, they come back in the evening, they're tired, they eat, they sleep. Mm -hmm. How do you know? Sometimes you know something might happen to a kid and uh, they might never say it because they'll feel ashamed or they were threatened to mm -hmm. talk about it. How do you know as a parent that your kid is is not the ayuko normal, sawa, ayuko sawa. Uh -huh. okay the first thing I, I say to a parent it's your role to educate your child on the private parts at a tender age actually at the age of three when we are watching that kids let them know that they have a private part which should not be touched are you washing your girl child wash them in the vaginal area and tell them mommy if in case someone touches you here come and tell me you know the voice of the kid actually the first voice that sticks in the minds of a kid it's very important because now that he knew mommy had in yambia mutu wakiniguza hapa niende ni muambie and someone touches them and tell them usiende kuambia mommy so you see there is two voices that are gambling in the mind of these kids but if he has trust trust you in you as a parent that is the first voice he had all she had which is almost the big yeah exactly ulimwambia and remind them not only once when you are washing them make sure when you are washing them in the evening remind them that hapa mtu hafai kukuguza you have this private part that someone should not touch second you know the the, the normal the normal the normal behavior of your kids you are kid maybe a teacher in school you also know the normal behavior of a kid like a kid for for instance who who used to be very hyper all of a sudden comes in school and now he just wants to be very withdrawn somewhere he doesn't want to talk he doesn't to engage in games at least don't overlook just talk to that kid i say uh, are you a parent and uh, maybe you know the behavior of your kid like the kid just comes and wants to be in bedroom, wants to sleep. Don't say him to wangu squeezy. Like most say that my kid nowadays is very antisocial. She just wants to be in bedroom or he just wants to be. Some say amekuwa mzuri hata ali. Amekuwa mzuri siku hizi hata anashinda kwa nyumba. And by the way, you see like a normal a, a normal grown up person would be raped. You see the psychology as in if one feel I'm traumatized. The same way the kid feels. But just that he doesn't know how to open because maybe he was blackmailed. Uh -huh. uh -huh. That ukisema ujue nitakuua. You know uh -huh. that is the most thing they use mm -hmm. and actually even as a parent when you are washing them mm -hmm. the, you see the itching due to that rip there is that itching mm -hmm. but when you are washing your kid and you notice a pain mm -hmm. somewhere she's feeling pain all the boy is feeling pain just pay attention to why why is he feeling pain in the private parts if no one touched them mm -hmm. you, you, those are the those are the very small small things that you'd ignore but mm -hmm. they mean a lot all right yes so as a as a as a counselor 
mm-hmm. and somebody who's passionate about sex education mm-hmm. and a very free society mm-hmm. what is your vision with what you're doing oh my vision actually is to first first of all is to actually bring to zero the rape issue especially for the young children mm-hmm. uh, that is the biggest thing you can ever do that mm-hmm. is the I, I think even i don't know even god how would punish such a person when mm-hmm. you are taking just that a very small kid mm-hmm. and then you are raping them mm-hmm. at least if you just feel that sexual urge because uh, actually it's it's a very pressuring urge mm-hmm. uh I used to say, at least look for a grown-up person. Mm-hmm. Ladies are there who you mm-hmm. can talk to. And it has to be consensual. Exactly. Mm-hmm. It has to be consensual. But mm-hmm. no, you see the lady, the, the young child even under the constitution, mm-hmm. he, yeah, he can't consent for sex. Mm-hmm. That is a very, a very, very wrong mistake. I don't know even if you are, you, you are, you, you are conscious with whatever right with you after you do such an action. Mm-hmm. It shouldn't be like that. And uh, you see, actually nowadays even the parents are doing the same. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, I say, especially for those women who are blackmailed by their husbands, mm-hmm. that to see same to see a channel, mm-hmm. and that person has raped your child. Mm-hmm. It's the high time you just value your kid more than you value your marriage. Mm-hmm. Uh, uh, that's exactly what I, I say. Mm-hmm. Because a man who can rape your kids is none than a killer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't, don't give in for that, that mm-hmm. someone raped your child, but just because you want to save your marriage, mm-hmm. that now you are hiding the same. So like a rape-free ha- society uh, is what you're working towards. Uh, exactly. A rape-free society. Free uh, society. Uh, and you're working with both the women and the men, and the men. in this towards yeah. achieving this goal. Yes. All right. Any projects that you're working on right now and how can people get uh, to talk to you in case they have problems with this? And how can people get a hold of you in case they want you to come teach maybe their kids in school or teach uh, their kids in Sunday school or teach their kids during camps, uh, for, uh, teach them about sex education? Yeah, I actually go to schools. I, I visit school, me personally, with a group of people whom we work with. Uh, we visit school, especially now we are dealing with Kajiado. Uh, the main aim, because as we have at least seen that abstinence is not working, let's be real. We can't keep on talking about abstinence, abstinence year one. Then the next year we have around 3,000 students who are dropping out of HIV, uh, uh, dropping school out of early pregnancies. We talk about it the other year. Now we have 46 percent of youth who are suffering from HIV, and then now we continue assuming that abstinence is working. It is not working. And no, if it's the best option, actually, if you feel that you can abstain, I used to say that is the best option, but it's not working for real. It's not, it has not been working. Uh, so my real aim, I educate them. And actually to some schools, I even, and to you, they distribute condom, like have it. Are you a lady? Have it. Are you going to visit your boyfriend? Have it in your handbag. Be bold enough to propose that, yes, no, we should use a condom because we are not married. Uh, I, I am the one who will carry the pregnancy. You will not carry the pregnancy as a man. Right. Yeah, pregnancy is my role. Uh-huh. I carry and you have the choice either to say it's yours or not. Right. Thank you very much for that insight. So we have a question yes. from uh, one of our viewers. Mm-hmm. And yes, uh, is it a crime to infect somebody... Oh, is it a crime to infect somebody uh, with HIV while knowing? Knowingly, it's a yeah. crime. Uh-huh. It's in the Constitution of Ke- in, of Kenya. Mm-hmm. You can't be jailed for that. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's, it's a, a crime. crime. It's a, crime. A, a very big crime for that matter. Mm-hmm. Knowingly, that mm-hmm. is yes. Knowingly, yes. When you do that, knowingly. Thank yeah, you very yeah, much. Yeah. How can they get catch you on social media? Uh, your camera is number four. No, my camera. Uh, your camera is number four, mm-hmm. your social media handles, and uh, maybe the organization's social media handles mm-hmm. so that they can interact with you in this day yeah, and age. Okay. Uh, you can go to my Facebook, um, Esther Karaoke. Esther, with an uh, I am sure, so it reads Esther Karaoke uh, on my Instagram at Esther Karaoke. Uh, and then on my YouTube, I have so very many videos talking on the proper way of using condoms. That is the most important. All right. Yeah, my YouTube, Esther Karaoke into bracket safe sex. It's there illustrated on the proper way of using condom, the way to use the pills and HIV pills, who should use them and when to be used. Uh, what causes a person to be tested HIV positive or her results not seen negative and yes, positive and yet he is on ARVs? There are situations like that when you can be under ARVs and when we are going to test, uh, it, it, it doesn't show the reasons so why it should be. All, these things, all on those your things are on my YouTube, uh-huh. so follow me there. And yes. So Esther Kariuki on social. Uh, all right. Yeah. 
Thank you very much, Esther, for coming through, and thank you very much for what you're doing to, for the kids and for the society at large. Thank you very All much. All right, so we've come to the end of Strength of a Woman today, and we had Esther Kiruki, who is a sex educator, a psychologist, a counselor, and she works with USAID. So for more information, be sure to head straight to her YouTube channel. That is at Esther Kiruki in bracket safe sex to get more important information. I go by the name of Barry Mosses, or it's Barry Mosses, every social media platform, and Kalami Val is coming up next with Girls Talk, a hot topic you don't want to miss it.